All right, guys, we are very lucky. Bart is here. He's one of the world's most famous male models. Have you ever modeled before? Uh, this is my first. Do you feel like you're ready to be a male model in this video? Do you feel confident? I don't, I do not feel confident. That's exactly what you want your model to feel like. So what we're going to be doing is taking this guy who's never modeled before. Hopefully I'm a good enough photographer and I'm good enough with lighting that we can turn this decent looking guy into an incredibly masculine looking black and white image. Let's see what we can do. We want to create longer free tutorials on YouTube for you guys. And to make this possible, we have multiple sponsors for each one of these videos. But what makes these sponsors different is that they're donating gear that we're actually going to be using to create the photographs in these videos. Later on in this tutorial, we're going to be using Exposure X4 by Alien Skin. It's awesome post-processing software. If you want to learn more about that, head over to the description. But the other two sponsors are the camera and the tripod. So let's talk about the gear that we're gonna be using to actually take these pictures. This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S. This is the medium format camera. At right around 50 megapixels, this thing has incredible resolution. Now I've been using this camera for a few weeks now and you guys probably saw it in the video where I took a picture of a drone. We did that product shot and we're going to be using the exact same lens that we did for that shoot with this portrait. So let's specifically talk about the shoot that we're doing today. I wanna to get a shallow depth of field portrait, but we're going to be taking a picture of Bart on these hand-painted backgrounds by Gravity. As you can see, they have really nice texture and everything to them, but you're not really going to be able to tell if they are in focus or not because it's just kind of hand-painted blotches of different gray tones. So when I say shallow depth of field, I'm talking about shallow depth of field on my subject himself. I wanna get shallow depth of field from Bart's front eye to his back eye. I want there to be shallow depth of field from Bart's face to his back shoulder. Now this is a 120 millimeter macro F4 lens. We're gonna be shooting at F4, but keep in mind, because we're gonna be forced to get a little bit closer to our subject, because this is a little bit longer than the equivalent 90 millimeter macro lens that you might shoot on a full frame camera, we are going to get shallower depth of field with an F4 lens than you're accustomed to if you're shooting with a 35 millimeter camera. Now, the camera is currently being supported with the Manfrotto 055 tripod. Now, this tripod is almost identical to the 190 that we used in the product video that we released a week or so ago. However, this one is a little bit larger. It's a little bit beefier. It's going to be slightly more stable as well especially if you're using a large, heavy camera like this. If it were up to me personally, I would spend the extra money to get a tripod like this, simply because there are those situations where I need a little bit more height. Now, just like the 190, this entire tripod is made of carbon fiber. It has these hinges here that allow the legs to come out even further so you can get closer to the ground. It also has these quick release levers that allow you to easily and quickly lengthen these legs. And of course, because it's made of carbon fiber, it's super lightweight and very robust. Now, just like the 190, this has my favorite feature, which allows you to turn your camera 90 degrees. I can lock this down right here. And then if I was shooting a product straight down, I could set it up just like this. Even if you're not the type of photographer to shoot products and shoot straight down, I guarantee you something will eventually come up and go, ah, I wish my, I wish my camera could do this. A lot of times if you're just using a tripod head to move over, you're going to catch the legs in the shot. This allows you to really extend out and shoot a much larger area on the ground. Now on the top of these legs is the Manfrotto X Pro ball head. This is personally my favorite style of tripod head. If you can remember to the last video, we used a three-way pan and tilt head. That's probably a little bit more precise because you can move just one axis at a time. I like the speed of a ball head though. So by loosening one lever here, I can move the camera wherever I want and then lock it into place with just one lever. It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster. It also has a drag knob, which allows you to dial in how loose you want the head to be when the main knob is all the way loosened. So right now I have the drag pretty heavy. And as I loosen this, you can see how easy it becomes to move around. So depending on how heavy your camera is or how much drag you want as you move it around, you'll be able to dial that in with this knob. 
Now, using a tripod for portraits may or may not be necessary. I have to admit, a lot of times, especially if I'm using strobes like we will be today, I prefer being handheld because I can quickly move around and get a lot of different angles. Years ago, I met Peter Hurley. We started making videos together. I'm sure you guys have seen many of those. And he worked almost exclusively on a tripod. And he did that for a couple of reasons. One, he did it because he was shooting with hot lights. He didn't want to have any motion blur from the camera moving. But two, he also liked having everything dialed in perfectly and then only working on his subject's expression. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Some photographers love shooting handheld, others like shooting with a tripod. But in this video, I am going to be using a tripod exclusive. So now that you know what the plan is and what we're going to be shooting with, let's go ahead and start taking pictures. So in front of me here is my buddy Bart. Bart is not a professional model, but today he is going to play one and hopefully we're gonna make him look like one. We're gonna do two different lighting setups and then pick our favorite to edit. Now, normally I like lighting someone from their nose. So if they're turned to the side, I would light from this side. And if they're turned this way, I would light from this side. We're gonna start with my weak side of lighting, which is lighting the broad side of their face. I'm going to get Bart to look towards this camera over here, but I'm going to light him with a key light over here. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we could do this. We could use soft light, but because I'm shooting a guy and because I think I want this to be a black and white portrait, I'm gonna go with some hard light. Now, when we talk about hard light, that means the light is physically smaller in size. Bigger light, like a soft box, is gonna create soft shadows. Hard light is gonna be a smaller light. So we're gonna use a bare bulb light I think I'm gonna put a small dish on it just to contain the light, but we'll start with that. Now Manfrotto is one of the sponsors for this video, but this is not one of the products they wanted to tell us about, but this is one of my favorite products, so I definitely wanna mention it. This is the Manfrotto 420B Light Stand Boom Arm Combo. It can be either or. We've started replacing all of our light stands with these just so whichever one we grab, we can use it in this boom orientation if we want to. So I'm gonna turn on a modeling light here just so I can see what I am working with. Now keep in mind guys, we have video lights going here. So it's not gonna look quite the same as it will to my camera when I actually turn the strobes on. But we're not gonna be picking up any of these constant lights when we actually take a picture. Now for camera settings, I'm going to be shooting at ISO 100 for the best dynamic range. I'm going to be shooting at F4, which is gonna give us the shallowest depth of field. Remember, that's going to look a little bit more shallow than what you're used to. It's gonna be around F3.1 if it were shot on a full frame 35 millimeter camera. And then the fastest sync speed for this camera is one over 1 25th of a second. That's as fast as we can go. You understand, Bart? I'm, I'm following. Okay, let's take a test shot. As you can see, we have something to work with here. I think we can do a little bit better. I think we can add a little bit of fill light. And then if we wanna crunch those shadows back down when we get into post, we'll have that option. If you shoot like this where your blacks are totally black, it limits what you can do when you get into post. So I'm going to add a fill light. Now this is where I feel like most photographers really mess up. Most people put one light on one side of their subject and another light on the other side of their subject. It creates this cross lighting effect and these shadows that intersect with each other. And that is the cheesiest form of lighting. Every amateur photographer does it. Do not do it. At the very least, Put your fill light just right above the camera and your pictures will look pretty good. I'm gonna do something a little more crazy than that. I'm going to put my fill light near my key light. So it's going to still have really dark shadows on the other side of his face, but it's going to lighten up those shadows that are on the broad side of his face just a little bit here. Now I've set this softbox to the exact same power as I have my other light over here and uh, it may not be just right, but I definitely don't want it to overpower our key light. That would kill the entire mood of the shot. I just wanna open up the shadows on this side of his face just a little bit. So let's see what this looks like and we can play with it. All right, so I think our fill light is a little bit too powerful right now. You can see it's kind of killing the entire vibe of this image. So let's go ahead and turn it down one stop. And let's take another shot. So I feel like this shot's looking pretty good. Obviously we have a lot of posing to work with, but uh, I think the right side of his face or camera right side of his face is a little dark. Uh, obviously it's kind of it's kind of falling into that background completely. And because we have that really dark background, it makes it difficult to see. All right, so here I'm adding a strip box 
right behind him. Again, I'm gonna turn this down really low. I'm arbitrarily picking a number that I think is going to be right. And I just want to use this as a soft light that's gonna barely edge out those dark shadows on the opposite side of his face. I don't want this to overpower the shot. I don't want this to kill our vibe. I just wanna have a little bit of separation between him and the background. Three, two, one. All right, I think this looks really nice. All right, so I think we've got our light locked in. Now we have to get that perfect pose, perfect expression. Let's get to it. All right, Bart, let me get you to uh, turn your body a little bit this way. That's great. Forehead towards me just a little bit. And let me get you to lean forward on one of those arms. Perfect, perfect. That looks great. For some of these, let's look past the camera. So look into this soft box right here. That's great. So let's talk about lighting here and let's get a little bit more in depth. We're still going to be using the hard light with the reflector dish. It's just containing the light, shooting more light forward. I don't want it spilling all over the background and everything. And this time we're going to be lighting from his nose to create Rembrandt style light. So whichever way your subject is facing, if their nose is going off this way, that is where the key light would be. We're gonna do really hard light with this. We're not gonna have a three light setup. We're just gonna do a two light setup here. It's gonna be a little bit more simple than the first one, but you may like it more. So go ahead and sit how you were before. I think you were kind of looking off in this direction. Now, let's talk about light placement here. We can go up really high with this light if we want to, and it's gonna start casting shadows down. You can see that shadow under his nose going down, 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 down. It's also creating bags under his eyes. Remember, it's a little bit hard to see because we have video lights on me here. But I'm watching where this light is reflecting because I don't want the bags under his eyes to block the light from hitting his eyes. I wanna see that highlight in his eyes. The other thing that I don't wanna see is you can see that right by the shadow under his nose, I can see that it's not connected to the shadow on the side of his cheek. I want it to connect. So to do that, I can move this light over a little bit more. I just want a little highlight, maybe a little triangle on that far side of the cheek. And that's going to create that Rembrandt style of light. But keep in mind, we don't have a fill yet. So when we take a test shot, it's going to look really, really dark. So as we expected here, we've got really cool light, really nice direction that it's coming from, but of course the shadows on the opposite side of his face are completely black. We don't have any fill at all. Now remember, the average photographer would put a big fill light on this side and completely ruin the mood of the shot. We don't wanna do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in the same big soft box that we used last time, but this time I'm going to put it just right around my camera's lens here. That's going to open up all of the shadows evenly. So anything that the camera's currently seeing as totally black right now, we'll be able to get a little bit more detail back. All right, let's take a test shot here. All right, that's probably a little bit too much fill. So let's turn it down and take another test shot. All right, so this is looking pretty cool. This is exactly what I want, but before I start shooting and really getting this all dialed in, let me put it on the other side and show you what I mean about wrecking the mood. So as you can see in this shot, it's not horrific, but it certainly doesn't have that edgy vibe that we're going for. It just kind of looks like we have two lights coming from each side. By having the fill light directly over the camera, it doesn't feel like we're adding an additional light. It feels like we're just bringing up the shadows in the image overall. That's the mood we're going for. All right, Bart, I think we have this all perfectly dialed in here. Go ahead and look this way for me. And let's knock out a few shots. Can you uh, turn the body a little bit this way and then lean forward on? Yeah, perfect, thank you. I have to say, one thing I am really liking about this camera is I can move the focus point all over the frame. All the DSLRs I own have a, a focus area that's in the middle of the frame, but this goes right to the edges. I'm moving his face so that I get this little sliver of light under his eye. That's what looks so cool in this shot. And again, we'd totally lose that if we had the our fill light too much 
over to the left side. So I think we've got two really good looking shots here. I hope you guys have learned that hard light can be really fun to work with, but keep in mind, in most cases, if you're gonna be lighting with hard light, you still wanna have some sort of fill. Otherwise, you're just gonna have completely black shadows. And for the most part, that doesn't look good for most people, especially when it comes to females. We can push the shadows a little bit more when it comes to a masculine guy, having dark shadows looks cool. But when it comes to females, you can still work with hard light, but in many cases, you don't want those long shadows and you don't want them to be quite as dark. All right, we're here on the computer and we can talk about our third and final sponsor, which is Alien Skin Exposure X4. If you guys saw the last big tutorial that we did shooting the drone, the product shot, we used Alien Skin's Exposure X4 as the final step in editing to give our images a look. But the thing about this software is it's a lot more powerful than just quick color grading. In many cases, it could replace Photoshop and Lightroom if you're not doing really complex edits, especially dodging and burning stuff that we're gonna to do to this image. You can do it completely in Exposure X4. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how you can cull and edit raw files using this software. We're going to then dodge and burn the image, and then we're going to give it a black and white conversion, and hopefully that's all we'll need to do. Now, under folders up here, I'm going to click the plus button and add a bookmark. I am then going to paste in the location of all my raw files and hit select folder. As you can see, everything imports here. This looks very similar to Lightroom, if you guys are familiar with that. And if I double click on any of these shots, as you can see, it makes the image bigger. And then along the bottom here, we have all of these thumbnails. Using the arrow keys, we can go right and left, selecting different thumbnails, which of course show up bigger on the screen. And then we have different types of filters and markers here. We have flags, stars, colors. All of this stuff will help you categorize your pictures. It'll help you cull through these shots. Now, I'm not going to make you sit through this while I go through every single one of the images that we took, but give me a minute. What I'm going to do is rate each of these one through five. So I'm gonna go through all of these and figure out which ones I want to edit. All right, I have culled all of these images down into my favorite seven. Let's look at them really quickly. I feel like this was the best shot with the broad sided lighting. This was also interesting, but he looked a little more hunched over. I feel like both of these are pretty cool. But then once we move the key light to the opposite side, this is kind of my style of lighting. I, I prefer this. And so I have to say, I really prefer these images as well. Take a look at these two shots, which I still think are pretty cool, but, but notice how the close eye is completely in shadow. We could definitely recover that a little bit, but I feel like once we get to these other shots here, where we have that just that little bit of light skirting across and we have that beautiful highlight right in his iris, I feel like that's really what makes this image come alive. And so I feel like these look fantastic. And this wide shot looks great too. I think if I had to choose my favorite two images, it's probably these last two shots and they're pretty similar. Uh, one's wide obviously, and one's a, a tall vertical image, but both of these look really cool to me. Now keep in mind, all of these files are raw images. These are importing raw files. We can convert them right from here and then we can add effects to that raw file, which is really, really cool. If you're accustomed to using Lightroom, this should feel very normal to you. We can obviously push the exposure a little bit. We can recover some of these highlights. Shadows, we might wanna boost just a little bit because remember we're going to uh, crunch that back down once we start adding effects. I'm also going to show you guys how to dodge and burn files in Exposure X4. We don't need this image to be super contrasty yet because we'll add a bunch of contrast in a little bit. Okay, up here in the upper right, you'll see layers. We can make this drop down here. I'm going to hit the Band-Aid tool here and just expand this so that we can see it a little bit better. Holding spacebar will show us the before, and this is gonna be really helpful when we start adding more effects later on. But you can see this is what the raw file looks. Drag right in. And if we hold spacebar and click, it will zoom in to 100%. And then we can continue holding spacebar and click and drag around. And we can see that Bart has really nice skin, but of course everybody has a few little places that we can touch up. So I am just going to use this tool here and you can click 
And Alien Skin does a really good job of automatically choosing locations in the scene to grab from, to, to heal skin from. If you don't like where it's grabbed, you might say, ah, this is a little highlight right here I don't like. You can just move this where you want it. So all we have to do is click around the shot and we can add all of these little fixes to Bart's skin here. And the nice thing to remember is that all of this is completely undestructive. So if you wanna go back later and remove one of these or change it, you can easily do that. All right, we can zoom out now and we can see what this entire thing looks like. If you mouse over the picture, it's gonna show you where all of the healing has taken place. And if you mouse out of the frame, you can see what the image looks like with all of the healing done. I feel like this looks pretty good. We can do more later if we need to, but before we get into the dodging and burning, I think we need to start adding a look to this image. And what I'm going to do over here is go to my presets panel and I am going to click on, let's see, black and white films. Let's just go through this and see what it looks like. So as I mouse over each one of these presets over here, it will affect the way our image looks. And what's so great about this software is they have endless options here. And if you like certain aspects of a look, you can keep that. This one, for instance, this is the Ilford Delta 3200. It's trying to replicate what this black and white film would look like at 3200 speed, which would obviously be really noisy and grainy. You can see all that noise and grain here. Maybe you don't like that. Well, you could keep this effect and then just go into the grain panel on the right side and tone that grain down. So I really like how you can fine tune all of these looks. There are black and white low contrast shots where the blacks aren't gonna be quite as crushed, but we can go even crazier than this. They have black and white Polaroid shots, which have a really significant effect on them. So much of this stuff, you know, I, I would never be able to come up with on my own, but as I'm, you know, just mousing over some of these and looking at them, it's just giving me so many ideas. Like, oh, maybe, maybe he does kind of look like a World War II fighter pilot or something. And uh, I never would have thought of that without all of these different effects. All right, I could look at these all day. Let's go back to the one that we liked. What was it? Kodak Plus X125. I think this looks pretty cool. Now let's get into dodging and burning. What we can do here is we can click on the paintbrush here on the right side. And under presets, we can click on dodge and burn. And let's do uh, burn first. And as you can see, what that's created is a new layer on top here. And it's created a mask, a black mask that's almost identical to Photoshop if you're accustomed to masks in Photoshop. And all we have to do now, you can see I can scroll down here, I can change the size, I can change the feather, the flow, that's the amount or the opacity. All I have to do now is just come in here and start painting on this raw file. And again, keep in mind that all of this is completely undestructive. We can come back and change it if we don't like it. But I am just gonna start painting areas of this image that I feel like would look better a little bit darker. Keep in mind that we have the flow set to 10 right now. So it's doing just a very little bit, but that's kind of what you want when you're, when you're dodging and burning big chunks of people's faces. You don't wanna to do too much, it'll, it'll get out of hand pretty quickly. All right, so let's say that looks pretty good. Let's create a new preset here. And we're going to choose Dodge or Lighten. As you can see, this has created another layer with another layer mask. And then let's just brighten some of the stuff up just a little bit. All right, so now we can go up to the individual layers and we can toggle them on and off to see what we've done. A lot of times we go too far when we do dodging and burning, but then we can tone that down if we want to. So you can see here, I'm gonna to toggle on and off the dodge layer here. This is what's brightening certain parts of the image up. And then let's turn on and off the burn layer. You can see this is where we've darkened things down. I feel like the burn layer pr looks pretty good. The dodge layer, I think we've gone a little bit too far. So if we feel like we've gone a little bit too far, I can click on the eraser tool under this dodge layer here, and I can just erase some of these areas where I feel like we've made it a little bit too bright. 
One other thing that you can do, uh, and I do this in Photoshop all the time, is I will just turn down the opacity on the entire dodge or burn layer. You can do that here in Exposure X4 as well. If I click on this first layer, which is the dodge layer, I can click on this opacity slider and just turn the opacity slider down to exactly where I want it. I feel like that looks pretty good. On the burn layer here, we can cycle it on and off. And once again, I can just change this opacity. If I feel like we've gone a little bit too far, maybe somewhere in here is just right. So we could go a lot further with these layers here. You can see here, if I go to presets, I could add clarity to just portions of this. Maybe I wanna smooth out the skin a little bit, add clarity just to the eyes to make them a little bit sharper. I could also whiten teeth if teeth were in the shot and if it were a color shot, I could add saturation. There's lots of different options here. I don't think that we need to do that for this particular image, but I didn't wanna point that out. Now, if I scroll down here on the right panel, you'll notice that we have a lot more options than you'll find in Adobe Lightroom. For instance, border. I wanna make sure that I'm clicked on the original layer down here and I can click border. And it's going to add a border to this shot. And then I can just cycle through tons of different borders. I can zoom in on this border if I want it to be uh, you know, smaller on the edges. I can also change the opacity of the border if I don't want it to show up a ton tons of different options. I can also come in here and add lighting effects. Each one of these lighting effects that I cycle through, I can click this button to randomize another lighting effect that shows up. And then I can click these arrows to rotate the lighting effect. And uh, it'll, it'll change where it shows up in the size on the image. You can also zoom if you want it to be larger in the shot. And then of course you can lower the opacity of this as well. So you can see we can come in here and completely change the way this image looks. Down here with texture, we can add film grain. That's another panel. But here we can add dust and all these crushed jade. I mean, there's a million different things that we can do. You can also change the blending mode, which is really nice. So if you want to darken the shot only, you can do that. You can see just a hint of some of these effects in the background. The average user would not know what they're looking at. They would just say, that's a cool looking shot. So I definitely don't want the border in this. The lighting effect, I like that as well. Maybe it's a little bit much. Maybe I could tone it down a little bit more. But just adding little hints of interest to the shot make it look really cool to me. All right, I think you guys get the idea, but I want to edit one other shot very quickly. I don't think we need to go quite as in depth with this one. Let me click the uh, heel brush here. We will zoom in. I'm just gonna heal a few of these. All right, I think I like the way this sepia cream looks. Let's work from this. For this one, I'm gonna go a little bit more extreme. I'm adding a lot more of the white highlights. It's gonna look like maybe he's outside being lit by direct sunlight. I think that looks pretty cool. And then I'm gonna come in here and let's add another dodge layer and let's really enhance this streak of light that's hitting this eye here because I feel like that looks pretty cool. And we can cycle that on and off so we can see what we've done. I think we've gone a little bit too far on the cheek there. So what I can do is go to the eraser and just undo this area. And then let's add a burn layer. So I think that wraps up these shots. I, I feel like we were able to get some really nice looking black and white images without that much work. Keep in mind that the Exposure X4 software is 100% free to try. I guarantee you, once you try this software, you're going to absolutely love it. One other thing that I wanted to mention about this software is that if you tether your camera to a computer while you're shooting so that you can see your images big or maybe a client can see your images, you can send all of the images directly into Exposure X4 automatically as you shoot, and it will add an effect to the images so that your clients will get to see what they look like after they're edited rather than just flat, boring, raw files straight into a computer. Big thanks to Alien Skin, Fujifilm, and Manfrotto for making this video possible. Definitely check out all of the products that we talked about in the description below. 
And for more info just like this, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you'd like to check out our full length photography tutorials that are far longer and more in depth than these, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.